Welcome to Retrologic, episode 97. Holy moly, we're three away from 100? I guess we gotta... I guess we gotta do something for that, probably. We should do something. 100th show. Yeah. What do people do for that, usually? Should we... Uh, maybe we should give something away. Let's give the show away. Three new hosts. It, we do that all the time, though. <laughs> give it away, give we it should away. make people give us things for episode 100. Oh, that's a great idea. Whoever gives us the best gift wins accolades. Episode 100. Yeah. Who gets to be the guest? Um, <laughs> welcome to Retrologic. I'm Dan Caparello here with John Cummins and Sam Wagers. The team is back together uh, because last week we had no John and one Andrew, and now we are back to the normal routine. But Retrologic isn't just a podcast, it's a community of retro gamers. We've got an active, friendly, and free Discord community that you can join as long as you're friendly. Um, if you're unfriendly, then there's plenty of other discords that I can recommend to you that need some unfriendly people in them. We have giveaways. We have contests. We have a family of podcasts that uh, do other things like Retro Groove, a music history podcast on topic retro hosted by our very own John Cummins, a podcast dedicated to one video game per episode. And we also have... Um, film logic which is like you know the same kind of thing except for films and they're gonna have a daniel craig episode coming up pretty soon which is pretty cool all of that can be found at our website which is at retrologic.games there you can also check out our blog which is run by sam wagers our very own sam wagers um and he just put up something Weird. Sam, why don't you tell us what the hell you're, <laughs> you're doing over there? Oh, yeah. I have lost just, all track or I, I'm just connecting to alternate timelines. It's it's fine. I just patched myself into the internet from another universe, and I'm stealing content from myself uh, in a, a world where Atari is the the greatest video game company and Nintendo makes games for them. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can see what that's about. Uh, I have written a, uh, retrospective, uh, from across the multiverse in a different timeline on a game called, uh, the legend of Zelda harmonica of time, uh, where it's Zelda, but it's also link as a cowboy. And, uh, yeah, you can, you can see what that's all about there. Uh, it's, it's even got pictures. The, the, the artwork, the AI generated artwork that you discovered or made or whatever is some of my favorite AI artwork that I've ever seen. It's just, <laughs> it is well, something you, else. You should see all the, uh, all the, uh, failed attempts. Because uh, you should do it like a you blooper. Have to, you have to learn the right uh, the right language. Uh, I think I did show one in yeah. the in the host chat of just. It was funny too because I, I added to the prompt the phrase uh, <clears throat> captured on a CRT television mm -hmm. to try to make it you know look like a screenshot from a CRT. I, I was assuming it would just like you know layer some crude scan lines over, but it actually like framed the whole thing in a TV. And also the picture of Link there was just cursed. It still haunts me when I <laughs> close my eyes. Yeah, you should uh, post some of the other failed attempts because that's a lot. That's really funny if you still have them. Oh, um, see, I didn't save everything, but yeah, yeah, I still have some saved. You've also been streaming. Uh, how's that going? Uh, it's good. Uh, so I actually did finally wrap up Battle Network Two. Uh, I moved on to Battle Chip Challenge which uh, I was just streaming some more of tonight. Um, and as much as, like, I kind of made fun of it for being a game that plays itself, like, it, I've kind of warmed up to it. Like, there is a lot of random chance. There's a lot of, like, oh, well, you know, the, you know, it, you just, I mean, lots of games are random. You know, it, you just, you just got to be in the right mindset for it. You're like, oh, you know, I'm playing Mario Party and chance time last turn, just, uh, you know, 
gave all my stars to Luigi and that's what happens, you know, nothing I can do about it. So you just embrace the chaos and start to, I think the the game's biggest flaw is that it does not explain what's happening at all. Hmm. Um, and there is a lot of randomness, but there are ways to kind of strategize around it. So you kind of have to, I, if anybody does pick it up, I'd recommend getting a guide just for like what different battle chips do. Cause the game will not tell you. Okay. Yeah. But it's been fun. So I'm, I'm making some progress through that and I'm hoping to finish it up before the collection comes out so I can go on to battle network three. Rad, rad. Awesome. Yeah. That's been a really cool stream. And then John, what's going on in your neck of the woods in the retro verse? Um, well, I also added something to the blog, uh, kind of a first of its kind, I guess. Uh, we have our first review on the uh, Retroid Pocket 3. And hopefully we'll have more reviews to come. I've put up the, uh, the call for more reviewers, and I actually got a few people that are interested in uh, creating some reviews for us. Uh, maybe some people that are going to give us some in the future, and maybe some that already have that we're going to add soon. So keep eyes out on the the blog not just for sam's blogginess but also uh reviews on and i don't have any limits to what the reviews are for they're you know modern games retro games i just figure any review is worth posting if it comes from our community so that's all i put it out there to as far as guidelines go yeah definitely yeah i'm looking forward to that Uh, i'm definitely very community focused and so if somebody has a passion project they want to throw our way, I'm more than happy to promote it for them, throw it on the blog. Um, yeah, and once then, we got to work out. Right now the website's in like a weird place, so I got to work out some stuff uh, with the shop is acting weird. So once once we, I get that figured out, then things will be normal. But the blog's up. The blog is fine. <laughs> yes. And when you get the shop back up, that's for sure that... Yeah, I've also got new stickers from mm-hmm. Topic Retro that we uh, have added to the shop, but you cannot purchase them from the shop yet. So uh, once we get that up, those will be available. Um, and then, as far as On Topic Retro goes, um, I've kind of I've teased a Crazy Taxi uh, episode, and it's still on the way. I just haven't been able to get that one recorded yet, so. I plan on recording the first episode of season two. That's my fault. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, that's fine. I want to talk crazy taxi, but my, like, even this episode is a week late just because we've all been crazy stuff's been happening. Yes, for sure. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move into season two as planned for this month. And the first game of season two will be Tetris, right? Sweet. Yes, Tetris. That's what we picked for the uh retro rewind for february so that's what we'll be following up on uh that will include new music and uh i i think that's all i'm gonna do for now because that one kind of missed the the idea of the retro rewind challenge our champions so which i can go ahead and talk a little bit about that too i with the the new changes that i'm bringing to the show for season two every month The Retro Rewind game that's chosen for the month will also have a contest or a challenge included with it. And it will be a random challenge that I select. Uh, Just for example, for this month, uh, everyone selected Wave Race 64 for the game. And I put up a challenge to give me your fastest lap time, or uh, three lap time for, uh, which was it Sunset Bay? Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe so. And uh, the winner, whoever gives me the fastest uh, three-lap time, will get a $10 gift card from their store of choice. Sweet. You know, be Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, And we'll be doing this every month. So every time we pick a game for the month, I'll figure out some kind of challenge that we can do to have a contest for it. So Awesome. Kind of the trying to bring some more things to the, the Discord, get some people playing games yeah that's fun and i saw a couple times posted already so so you got some competition going 
Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, we've got our Film Logic episode that just went up is Best Fictional Movie Presidents plus Marvel Fatigue. And then over at Retro Groove, we have the Best Cartoon Theme Song episode that just went up, and they have a new one coming up soon. And I don't know what it's about. Um, Sam, why does it say National Weights and Measures Week? On my because it's National Weights and Measures Week, of course. What is? Did you not know? I, I didn't. Did you week, not have right? plans? Uh, it lasts until the seventh. There's still time. Oh, there's still it's still going. That lasts how, till tomorrow. How does one celebrate National Weights and Measures Week? Uh, usually by weighing and measuring. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I weighed myself this morning. Does that count? How much do you weigh? Sure. Down? Is that too is that too personal? Do you not want to reveal how much you weigh? No, I, I, it's not bad. What is your mass in slugs? <laughs> in slugs, I, I do not have the conversion rate for that. But <laughs> well, just take uh, your, just take your weight in pounds what's and divide your, by thirty two. What's your weight feet it, per second squared? What's your weight in one pound slugs? <laughs> and one pound slugs would be two hundred and five as of this morning. Two hundred five. Cool. 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 Good. Um, I'm at a slim 140 because I can't gain weight, and it's a problem. I, I have the opposite problem as an adult. Yeah. As a child, I didn't have that problem. I, get I still. All day. I just, <laughs> yeah. It's like both sides are a problem for different reasons. Um, all right. Well, happy Weights and Measures Week to, to all. Um, may you have a merry. The Nintendo dads know what that's about. You had to be there. I, was I seen the I seen the commotion going on, but um, I'm not a weights and measures uh, professional. So I'm surprise, that surprise, to the professionals. I've been out of it, so we'll leave that to the professionals, and we will do what we do best and play some prices retro. A price is kind of like a measure, if you think about it. It is. It's a measure of value. Well, on that note, if this is your first time playing Prices Retro, here's how we play. I'm going to list off four or five games, and everyone has to guess how much the lot is worth in total. Whoever's closest to the actual value wins that round, and everyone has a list. Everyone guesses on each other's lists. At the end, the player that won the most rounds wins the episode. But watch out for our robot, Deus Guess Machina. He averages all of our guesses together for his own guess. So. Uh, we've got the three of us, and we have an ambassador game as well, Ooh. which we will play after. So. La -da 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 -da. Um, why don't John go first this time? What's your okay. list? The uh, first game on my list is Mousetrap Hotel for the Game Boy. Uh, complete in box. The okay, second hold game. Okay, hold up, hold up. Is it a mousetrap or is it a hotel? Is it a mousetrap disguised it's, as a hotel? It's a puzzle game about mice. Is it a hotel for mousetraps? Hotel to check in, like sentient mousetraps. You'll have to play the game. I just have so many out. questions. Okay, sentient mousetrap hotel for Game Boy, yes. complete in box. Okay, go. The second game is a N sixty four game that you may or may not remember called Dual Heroes. Fighting game, right? Yes. Yeah. I Complete in box. Remember it. Remember it well. Not well. The third game is Tracks for the Game Boy. <laughs> also complete in box. Just what? and the fourth game is Ghoul School for the NES. Complete in box. Mmm. Okay. I have a number. <laughs> and but Sam's going to guess first on this one. <laughs> okay, and I need a number too, I guess. Uh, how <laughs> do about not, do not have a number? <laughs> Two hundred and seventy-one. Okay. Okay. Mine is three ninety. Alrighty, 
Looks like Dan's going to take this one. The total is 418 and 85 cents. Hey, pretty close. Really close. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Mousetrap Hotel for the Game Boy. Uh, complete in box is a whopping $72.95. Uh, Dual Heroes for the N64 complete in box, $97.50. That's high for that one. Wow. Yeah, this game is, mm-hmm. I think, loose is maybe 10 bucks. Yeah, that's so. crazy. Uh, the third game, Tracks, for the Game Boy complete in box is $116.52. Yeesh. I I just bought a loose copy of this for twenty five bucks. It's pretty good. Uh, Ghoul School for the NES complete in box is one thirty one eighty eight. Okay. Yeah, so I was. These are. Oh, go ahead. I was all over the place on that, but but it all averaged out in the end. <laughs> yeah, like these close games... on two and very far off on the <laughs> other two. So. <laughs> These are all developed by, or not developed, published by the same publisher as uh, Eliminator Boat Duel. Oh, wow. Nice. So I thought Sam might enjoy this list. Duel Heroes, huh? Pick up a few of these. Interesting. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and go next. Um, Which is Electro Brain. I guess I could have mentioned that. Electro Brain, yeah. Yeah, I was was trying to think of who they were, and I was escaping. This is not a a publisher off the top of my head at all. They're not a very, uh, no. they didn't last very long. I'll put it that way. Last through N64 is pretty good. It's a long time ago now. <laughs> now it is, yeah. Um, yep. So my all of my games are Sesame Street games for the NES. We've got, we've got Sesame Street Countdown, complete in box. These are all complete in box. We've got Sesame Street ABC and 123, complete in box. What Se- console are these all on? These are all NES. Oh, NES. They're okay. all Sorry. NES complete in box, yeah. Um, the third, do you want me to start over? Nope. Okay. I'm good. Thir- third one, Sesame Street Big Birds Hide and Speak for complete in box. And the last one is Sesame Street 123, only 123, not one, two, three, and ABC. Those are two different games. In case you didn't know the situation with Sesame Street NES games, these are all I'll NES complete in box. <clears throat> um, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, because Sam went first yeah, last yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say 450. I'm going to cut it down to just 400. Well, Sam took this one. The actual retail value is $158.91. Apparently, people still don't want Sesame Street Sesame games. Street games. <laughs> <laughs> Except mm-hmm. this first one's uh, kind of expensive. So the, the first one, Sesame Street Countdown, is $74.95. And then the rest are dirt cheap for completing box NES games. Um, yeah, my thinking is like dirt cheap and then one would just randomly be like three. Yeah, that's usually how and it, it would is, be right? like the one, two, three without the ABC one. Yeah. Just because. Um, and anymore, it's hard to find a complete in box game that it, for NES that isn't at least like 50 bucks. Yeah. So I kind of figured like play it safe and then go a little high on well, yeah, these are the ones one sticker in there that yeah well the other thing high. is if if nobody's even buying or selling these then the price charting value is probably still like what it was 20 years ago yeah exactly probably not even trading hands the only people buying these games are the ones going for like complete collections uh, yep, at this 100% point percent collections um sesame street abc and one two three is forty three eighteen complete in box Sesame Street Big Birds Hide and Speak is twenty sixty nine, and Sesame Street One Two Three is twenty oh nine. So if you want a complete in box NES game and it doesn't matter what it is, these are some some good ones to go for. <laughs> there you go. So Sam took that round. There is a chance for a three way tie on this next yep. one because it's either Sam's either list. Dan will cement his victory or we will need a tiebreaker. So I have four games. These are all complete in box, uh, all different systems. Uh, I've got first up Arkanoid Do It Again 
for the Super Nintendo, complete in box. Hamtaro Ham Hams Unite for the Game Boy Color, complete in box. Final Fantasy VI Advance for the Game Boy Advance, complete in box. And Wario's Woods for the NES, complete in box. Hmm. Gosh, you're right, going so first. This I go time, first. Dan. Yeah. So my yep. guess Dan's, is Dan's turn to go first. My guess is four fifty. Four fifty for Dan. I'm Yeesh. gonna go with the even one grand. Yo. Okay. One well, grand. Did I do something so, really wrong or really right? <laughs> Dan is much closer. The total is three sixty two eighty five. Oh, yes. What the heck? Were you thinking that Hamtaro so, game? Between him, oh, I've, I've used it again. I've used it before, although it might well, not. Well, no, Final Fantasy VI price. for the uh, Game Boy Advance, I figured it'd be like up there. Hmm. Final Fantasy VI is the most expensive on the list, but it's just one sixty three ninety four. Okay. Oh wow. Uh, Arkanoid forty dollars. Yeah. Hamtaro Ham Hams Unite seventy five dollars ninety one cents. Mm hmm. And Wario's Woods for the NES complete eighty three dollars. I kind of figured more on that one too. It's like the last game on the NES. Well, it, that actually is the theme. So all four of these, and you might think from the theme this would be a very high price list, but all four of these are the last game that Nintendo published themselves in North America for those systems. Oh, Nintendo published. So there were other games after. Yeah, but. They were the last one that Nintendo published themselves. Interesting. At least to the best I could figure out. Some of those dates are a little fuzzy. If you go back there for things like the NES. And of course there were other things in Japan, like all the Mario Picross games for Super Nintendo. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, congrats to me. Thank you very much. Second win this season. So y'all better start catching up. Um, mm -hmm. what is this game from Ambassador? Uh, he sent this to us a while ago. Okay. I, uh, everybody was on it. So Let's pull it I up. did my best not to look at the spoilers. He had rules. He says, here's the new game. Niche, please. Or I guess niche, please. Maybe. Uh, yeah. where I find <laughs> games niche. all in the same genre with a description of each. Match the game to the description. The first picture, unspoiled, uh, gives the game board. So so can we all look at the game board? I assume we could all look at it. Okay, and then the other one is the answers. Um, okay. And the second one is answers. Don't look at that one. Okay, well, this is the honor system here. Mm -hmm. Only look at the first round image. Okay. So I'll go ahead and read all of them off so that the listeners can kind of know what we're talking about. But Or maybe we do one question at a time. Well, you're supposed to match. So it's, it's, a, yep. it's a seven and seven games and seven descriptions. Yeah, so I'm just trying to make it possible for the listeners. So why don't you just, uh, let's, Dan, uh, let's just list off the list of games. List the games and yeah. then go through and each we'll go time through, through each the question. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Or the okay. description. So here yeah. are the games that we're guessing on. We have, they're all snowboarding games. So 1080 Avalanche, Sean Palmer Snowboarding, SSX On Tour, Snowboard Kids, Dark Summit, Amped 3, and SSX Tricky. So those are the possible answers. Now we're going to run down each question and try to match it up. And then we'll see how we did. And then does somebody want to take notes while we're doing this? Because I'm limited to my screens right now. Um, okay, so the first <laughs> one is an Xbox 360 slash PS3 generation snowboard game with cutscenes involving sock puppets and unicorns. I think you lost me at... Um a 360 PS3. Well, I think okay. it's going to be so SSX on tour. So we know what it's not. It could be. It's not Snowboard Kids. It could be SSX tour. I That's don't. That's the only one that is going to be, unless it's Amped Three. I think Amped Three was also on those can consoles, but 
Amped wasn't silly. Amped was very serious about its stuff, if I remember correctly. So I'm okay with going with your guest here, John, of SSX on tour. Okay. Sam doesn't have a dog in the race, so we're just... We're yeah, just I have no idea. <laughs> that was in process of elimination. Okay, game number two. It's the closest thing to Mario Kart and snowboarding on the market today. Obviously, snowboard kids. Snowboard yeah, that one's kids. snowboard kids. Yeah. Yep. Three, a, a snowboarding game that has a damage meter every time you bail. I think this one might be Amped 3. I was going to say that or Dark Summit, because isn't Dark Summit kind of like a... I think Dark Summit's the next one. Survival Horror. <clears throat> oh, okay. That sounds like it go. would fit from the title, but yeah. I, okay, well, I'll live, I'll know. go with John's guess Sorry, at I Amped 3. I, ran ahead, I read ahead a little bit. So That's I fine, go for it. I think it's Amped 3. If we want to change our answers, we can too. Number four, a dystopian snowboard world where you must avoid electric fences and poison pits. Yeah, that sounds like Dark Summit. That's Dark Summit. Yeah. The only snowboard game with Mario and Luigi as selectable characters on the GameCube it has to be Tiny the Avalanche, right? That's Avalanche. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Number six, a snowboard game built around a really good Run DMC song, which would be tricky. That's SSX tricky. Yep. It's tricky to rock around. To rock around. That's right on top. That's right. Yep. It's tricky. And number seven, the Tony Hawk developers had one snowboarding franchise on the PS2. Got to be Sean Palmer. It's Palmer. Be Sean Palmer. With the names. Okay. So we'll run down our, our answers real quick before we reveal the, the actual answer. So our answers. The first one is an Xbox 360 PS3 generation snowboard game with cutscenes involving sock puppets and unicorns. We guessed SSX on tour. Number two, it's the closest thing to Mario Kart and snowboarding on the market today. We guess Snowboard Kids. Number three, a snowboarding game that has all damage meter every time you bail. We guessed Amped 3. A dystopian snowboard world where you must avoid electric fences and poison pits. We guessed Snowboard. We guessed um, Dark Summit. Dark Summit. Uh, the only snowboard game with Mario and Luigi, which is 1080 Avalanche. A snowboard game built around a really good Run DMC song, which is SSX Tricky. And Tony Hawk developers had one on the PS2, which is Sean Palmer. And we will now reveal yep. the answers. And let me just run down really quick. Oh, man. Oh. We, got them, we got them backwards. We got some backwards. Okay, mm -hmm. so the Xbox 360 PS3 game with cutscenes is Amped 3, not on tour. That was what I... I was wondering about that, but I didn't. I didn't push hard enough. So that one we got wrong. Number two is snowboard. Kids. Number two snowboard kids. Number three is 1080 avalanche. 1080 avalanche. Oh, wait, wait, we guessed amped three. Yes. Oh. Wait. So you couldn't be Mario and Luigi. What's Mario and Luigi? You could be Mario and Luigi. That in SSX is on SSX tour. SSX on tour. But not on huh. avalanche. That's weird. He this is this is SSX tricky right here. Okay. Um no, oh, sorry, okay. So number three, a snowboarding game that has a damage meter. That's I guess that's Tiny Avalanche. I haven't played it, but that's what that is. Number four, dystopian snowboard world where you must avoid electric fences. That's Dark Summit. Number five, snowboard game with Mar and Luigi. That's SSX on tour. Yep. Is that all is that a Wii game? Somebody look it up. Um, number I, six. I bet it is. A snowboard game built around a really good DMC song. Duh. SSX Tricky. And the Tony Hawk developers game is obvious. So we missed four of these. That's a GameCube game. Yep. I don't remember this at all. I don't remember on tour being on. I remember playing Tricky on GameCube a yeah. bunch. Maybe on tour was um, gen, cross gen. It was. Um, it was on PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Wow. Also. I was so and confident. PSP. I was so confident. GameCube in... version contains Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach as playable characters. I want to see video. Part of a deal Nintendo had with EA Sports to have Nintendo intellectual properties appear in EA franchises. Yeah, it's like the uh, NBA Street Volume 3, I think. You can play as Mario. Let's watch 
Luigi and Peach. Princess Peach. Oh my gosh. Princess Peach and SSX on tour. Look at this. Let's see here. This Didn't is, they put um This is goofy. They put like slime and Fortune Street and Mario Hoops, right? Yep. They did. This looks so out of that place. Was, that was a weird time for crossovers. The other characters in SSX Tricky are like <laughs> look like real humans. And here's Princess Peach why? being all goofy on skis. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, why did they make her on skis? Like I don't know, but it looks real goofy. It's so is weird. Is anyone else on ski? I it's guess there so are some off-putting. other people on skis. I don't know, but I don't want to watch this anymore. Uh-oh. I just lost Chrome. So let me go ahead and pull it back up. Sorry, listener. You are getting a taste of the Dan show. do 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 do, do dan by himself. Nobody's here but Dan. Until we get the guys back. So we can't really oh, he's do back. the show without him. Hi. <clears throat> Hello. You, you guys missed the Dan show. It was it for a couple seconds there. It was just me. Oh, so we, we were like, he got so bad about getting those wrong. He rage yeah. quit. The show. Like, I want to watch this. <laughs> Bam. I rage out. quit. I rage quit the show. I'm out. And then I sang a song. You guys missed it though. You missed the song, uh, but the listeners heard it. So that's all that matters. Um, and now what I'm going to do is pull the show notes back up because when Chrome crashed, it took my show notes with me, but that shouldn't take very long. And in the meantime, John, why don't you read your trivia card? Nice. Here we go. Well, we can also, uh, just to kind of go through, we just, we got three wrong out of the seven. I figured I'd mention that. Oh, not four. No, we got three of them swapped. Okay. That's better than I thought we did. Yeah. So, yes. Now we uh, now we can go back to the uh, card. So, which game was the first Super Mario game to feature 3D gameplay? Well, Yoshi's Island had Mode 7. Yeah, I don't think that counts. That's not <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> so Super Mario 64? Yes. No, 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 no. Yoshi Safari is 3D gameplay. It's not a Mario game. <laughs> it's a, yeah. What? You, who, There's no Mario. Who's there, writing right? Yoshi? You're no. Mario. Yeah, you're it's Mario. Role playing game. You're yeah. Mario. Question number two. The EA Sports video game series Madden NFL was named after who? Uh... Jose Canseco. Uh, neither one of those. <laughs> Jeff. You guys are not going to get this by technicality. Sparkleton. Oh. It's John Madden. It is John Madden. Yeah, it's John not Joe Madden. Madden. <laughs> oh, did you know? <laughs> uh, Mario <laughs> Madden. Mario Madden, yeah. Luigi Madden. It's a role-playing game. You're John Madden. Wal- Who is John mm-hmm. Madden's Waluigi? That's what I want to know. Wa Madden. Juan Madden. Juan <laughs> Madden. There you go. That's Juan a name. Yeah. yeah. Okie doke. Well, uh, barring any further technical difficulties, let's go ahead and jump into our show topic, <clears throat> which is the brainchild of our very own Sam Wagers. How has your opinion on a game changed on repeat playthroughs? So let's jump over there real quick. Bippity boppity boo. Okay, let's go. Welcome back. We're talking about replaying games. And has your opinion changed on a game after repeat playthroughs? We've got some community input on this. But first, we're going to talk amongst ourselves on this topic. Um, So, yeah. Anybody have anything that jumps out at them 
when we asked this question? Somebody kick us well, off. Well, I asked the question, so I mean, I, I can go first because I had a, I had a couple things on my mind. Go for it. Um, one is you know playing through Battle Network two uh, recently. Uh, I used to call this my favorite game in the series. I don't think I can anymore. Oh, because I just kind of had the you know <clears throat> the nostalgia filter on of this was kind of where. I think this that particular series clicked for me. I had the first game. Uh, the second one was the first one I actually like rolled credits on. I was stuck in uh, the Alekman area for a long time in Battle Network 1, so I gave up eventually. I came back to it after beating 2. <clears throat> I still think 2 is better than 1, but I think over time, because you know these are games where you're pretty reluctant to replay, uh, because you don't want to wipe your save because there's a big collecting component to it and losing that progress is like, you know, if you had a complete Pokedex, you'd be like, I don't really want to wipe my save file clean. It's kind of like that. Yeah. So this was the first time I'd actually played it through again. And realizing, you know, the stuff I forgot about it, uh, like just how tedious the fetch questing gets at the like near the end of the game where it just has you bounce between the same two areas like four or five times in a row i'm like this is not okay i have higher standards now mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> not to say that I, I i like walked away like disappointed in it or anything it's just that we're realizing like oh yeah i was thinking about this game as my favorite for a long time and i forgot about some of these parts um the other was I and I played on hard mode this time, hoping it might address what I knew was kind of a problem. And that's that the game's horribly imbalanced. Um, there is just some like ridiculous stuff you can do by the end of the game. If you collect all the right stuff, you can kind of just spam program advances that will wipe every enemy instantly. And well, that's really fun when you're like 11 years old and you think it's just awesome to repeat the same broken combo over and over. I, again, have kind of higher standards for games now. And I'm like, this is kind of, you know, this kind of sucks some of the fun out of it. Mm -hmm. Like if there's... And hard mode doesn't address that challenge in the right way. You know, it just inflates the enemy health and damage values. So <clears throat> just kind of like realizing that. Um, which is fine. And it's not like, again, it's not like I hate the game now or that that diminishes my appreciation for it. Then it's just like, you know, I can, I can kind of step back and look at the, look at the flaws and say, you know, I was ignoring these things before. Yeah. Um, another one actually, uh, which kind of gets to it. So there's, there's kind of the difference of perspective, who you are, what you're doing when you play it. Uh, what your life is like then can change how you view it a lot. But also, you know, just playing a game differently or playing it on different settings, playing mm -hmm. it on a higher difficulty. Because uh, one that uh, I also experienced very recently is actually Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, I haven't played through it all the way again, but I did, after rolling credits, start the game again on maddening difficulty. And I was a lot more impressed with how they handled it this time because mm -hmm. it's actually a lot better way to do difficulty than I was expecting. They actually made the enemies smarter on maddening difficulty. Oh. They didn't just give them higher stats. Like, uh, and an obvious difference that I noticed was when they cannot damage a unit, because you have a unit that has very high defense. So they cannot damage Louie. On hard difficulty, they will throw themselves against Louis. He will counterattack them, and they will die. On maddening, they're like, "I'm just going to run past him and attack your healers," <laughs> um, which is like, <laughs> okay, you know, props, props for that. You know, I mean, that's um, what you would do, right? And they will, well, and they will do that. <laughs> so the the normal way they will handle that is uh, if he's the only unit in range, they will attack him. They're kind of like hard coded, like. If I can attack, I will, even if it's pointless. Uh, on Maddening, even if nobody else is in range, they'll just keep moving. They'll keep trying to move past him. They won't attack because there's no benefit to it. 
Um, and that's just something I noticed. And mm-hmm. the other thing too is for all the you know all the crap I give engage, I'm also skipping all the story cutscenes and things. And to me, that has improved the game. Uh, I just <laughs> I don't need to worry about it because I know what happens, and it's not that's worth great. my time now, especially because you know I've seen it before. So I can just focus on the gameplay. I can focus on the game's strong points and skip the other stuff. Sweet. Nice. Yeah, good stuff and great topic. Um, I've got a couple that popped into my head, some for the some for better and some for worse. And a lot of the ones that end up being worse are the ones that I like thought that I loved when I was a kid that I go back and play now and I'm like, I uh, don't I don't really ever want to play this again. This is not a good time. Um the one that pops out at me first is Earthworm Jim, which is a character that I really love and connected with as a kid. Um and the the video games are just really like obtuse and frustrating in some weird ways and I mean, beautiful to look at. It's a it's a playable cartoon, but yeah, you, you've talked about this before. Oh, I think. Gosh, man. Yep. I just have. I'm okay never playing them again. I just I don't need that frustration in my life. Claymates is one that I played again fairly recently because it's on NSO. Um, and while I still appreciate it for what it is, it just it's not. It just didn't live up to my rose colored nostalgia goggles. Um, there's a lot there that could have done, been done a lot better. Um, it's just, that is it. Yeah. I, I played claymates at the same time and I think I enjoyed it, but I was not as attached to it to begin with. Yeah. Uh, so to me it was always just, it was one of those like games you rented blind and you're like, Oh, this is actually pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Like it's got some fun mechanics for sure, but you get into like the mid, the mid game and it just falls right off. It's just, it runs out mm-hmm. of steam. Um, Pokemon is a weird one for me because it like depends on the generation and all that. But I think everyone can say if you've done a repeat playthrough of a Pokemon game, uh, you have opinions on it. I don't really want to get into deep into that. But recently, <laughs> the two games that I've been been playing are Breath of the Wild and Metroid Prime uh, Remastered, and those are games that that get better on repeat playthroughs. Um, Breath of the Wild on Master Mode, um, which adds, if, if you don't know what Master Mode is, which hope, I think everybody does, but I'll just say it anyway, adds more enemies in different places on the map, adds floating enemies on platforms, all enemies regenerate health, even bosses, and... Because the enemies are harder to kill... Oh, also every enemy is like upgraded to the next like level of enemy because they're all color coded and everybody drops better loot. I think that's about it. Um, but it just kind of changes how you play the game. My first playthrough, I was in guns blazing. Like I would just jump into the middle of got of a pack of bacoblins and just wreck, you know, but you have mm-hmm. to play stealthy in master mode because you there are camps that you'll go into and you'll just get annihilated every time or especially early game. So, f- Oh man, on, on the plateau, like you can't even kill anyone. No, it's crazy. So early game, you're literally just running in to grab chests and whatever you can, or knocking a guy out to grab his sword and then running away. Cause you don't want to waste the sword on something. If you, if you know, on a kill, if you already have, if you already have the sword, um, it totally changes how you play. And I started playing Master Mode with the HUD off too, because I was like, I know this map. So it it made the world so much more dangerous and a lot more fun. And I actually just beat Ganon on Master Mode, um, which is a whole thing. I do not recommend Trial of the Sword in Master Mode. That will make you want to throw your Switch out the window. Um, Metroid Prime though. So I always loved Metroid Prime. Like, I don't think there was a day in my life where I didn't think it was one of the best games ever made. Um, this most recent playthrough, I'm really going through it because I, I beat it within the last 
three years um, on GameCube. But, like, it's just one of those games that I could pick up any time and play and just have a great time. And I'm getting towards the end of the game now. I'm doing the Chozo Artifact quest right before the end of the game. But it's still, it's a pretty huge quest. You have to travel throughout the whole map a bunch of times. Um, and one of the things that I really am appreciating about Metroid Prime, especially in 2023, when everyone and their mom is making open world games, is how focused Metroid Prime is. And how everything is designed around like a very specific goal, right? Um, whereas it's almost like like Breath of the Wild is the opposite of that, where it's like everything's like everything has systems in place, and you can just mess with the systems, and that's the game. But Metroid Prime is like no, there's a way to solve these puzzles, and you can you can veer from the order we want you to do things a little bit, but for the most part, we're guiding you towards these things. Um, and in a 20, in 2023, when everything's open, I really, really appreciate that more than when I did in 2002, when it came out, um, when that's just what games did. But I think Metroid prime does it in a way that made it stand the test of time because the remaster, all they did was touch the graphics and, and updated the controls. They didn't touch anything else about this game and they didn't need to like, it's just so good, you know? And I can say that as somebody who beat it less than three years ago on, on GameCube and play it again and be like, Oh, this is an amazing experience. And like, even though I, kind of know this game from like the back of my hand it's still a world that i want to explore and like rich rich deep lore <clears throat> and crazy hard enemies uh and you know puzzles that are just fun to do over and over again um so yeah i don't i didn't think my opinion on metroid prime could get any higher but i think it's i would i would get into an argument with somebody saying that like oh you know what which one is the best game of all time ocarina of time or metroid prime like i could i could um have that argument today <laughs> i'm not gonna have it here now but if you want to at me on we're twitter not, we're not gonna argue that well and it's definitely a lot less dramatic of a change too when you already love a game and you play it again and you find something new to like about it yeah and you, you play know, a game that, in different that's definitely been me you know the the twenty first time I played through Mega Man X, right? Um, you know, not a whole lot changed, but well, the other thing too is you're it's more just the proof that I really like that game. You've changed, right? Like I'm yeah. not who I was three years ago. I'm not who I was twenty years ago when it came out. So, going through this piece of art that you love with fresh eyes, as a person that you weren't when you the last time you played it is really really cool and really telling to the quality of the game and also just sort of your connection to it growing and deeper um so it's interesting too and, and obviously it's because games can be such a big time investment especially modern ones but big time you know it's it, as our our comments show people just don't have time for it uh, all too often but if you look at other kinds of art i mean could you call something your favorite song if you listen to it once like, that's really that's crazy yeah that's true yeah yeah or a movie yeah movies a lot maybe. of people only watch movies once but yeah i mean yeah, your favorite your movie favorite is movie, probably one you probably, own on DVD yeah, yeah, or, yeah you've probably say. seen it at least a few times that's true that's true now with so it would have to take a very special song, but I can think of at least one example where I heard a song one time and I was like, okay, this is, this is something. And I had to like, listen to it multiple times. Um, well, that's my point. You had to, but you, times after yeah. That. And you could, like you knew the right away, investment. but then yeah. you, 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 you verified that, you know, yeah. and it the, got better every time. The investment's so low that it's like, why not? 
Um, yep. Yeah. It's three minutes versus, yeah. you know, even three hours. In the scope of but how long... We... In the scope of how long video games are today, Metroid Prime is a short game. Uh, which is... Oh, yeah. Another thing and I even shorter is Mega Man X. There yeah. is a reason that that is the game I've played more times than Earthbound. Yeah. Uh, they're both very dear to mm-hmm. me. I have played Earthbound, I think, a double-digit number of times at this point, but I lost count. Um... But before we get to the questions, John, did you have any that you thought of that kind of you changed your mind on one way or the other? Yeah, I don't, you know, since being an adult and not having as much time, you know, replaying games is not as much of a necessity as it was being a child whenever you only had a few games. So replaying games was a lot more common for me, you know, back then. So now it takes a really either a a a really special game for me to go back and replay it or uh b it's not very long you know <clears throat> like uh i've probably played through dragon warrior or dragon quest one you know i don't even know how many times it was a game that i had as a kid and you know one of the few games i had on the nes and i would just sit and play through it you know because what else are you gonna do you know you're gonna play something else that you don't like as much i had other games but this mm-hmm. was the one i wanted so uh well and that's few... so much like, oh, like i've brought it up before but you know i really fell in love with the super nintendo when i was about 14 yeah when i was playing games i did grow up with but back then i thought they were too hard and it was too yep. frustrating but I was finding at that point, like, no, I could actually, I could actually beat all these. Like, I couldn't beat Donkey Kong Country when I was eight, you know. But I'm like, oh, at fourteen, I'm like, oh yeah, this this game's there's like, you know, a whole, you know, twelve more levels that I never reached, and they're really cool. And you know, the same with you know, like games like Mega Man X. You know, I could never get past the first fortress stage for the longest time. But you know, when when that difficulty barrier finally came down for me. Uh, I really, you know, redis. I mean, I liked a lot of these games I liked before, but you know, I, I was really finding just how much I liked them at that point. The other thing yeah, too, that it, a lot of our audience can connect with is watching your offspring play a game that you love will change it for you too. Cause they'll ask you stuff and you'll, you'll have to like sort of you know, either they'll ask you stuff or they'll just figure something out on their own that you didn't even think of or that you, you like wanted to see them do. And it gives you a whole, like a fresh appreciation for what you loved as a kid. And that's a really cool experience as well. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I don't really play a whole lot of modern games and a lot of times it is due to time constraints. Uh, but I definitely like one I could think of that I replayed I mean, in fact, I replayed it back to back. So whenever uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses came out, I played two of the houses like just back to back playthroughs. <laughs> Which I, don't, I, I very, did that with Triangle Strategy. Very seldomly do I, you know, it, it, reg- you know, even hop back into a game. Not you know, nonetheless, doing it back to back without playing something in between it. You know. Oh yeah. And to kind of speak to what Dan was saying, like my kids are now. Well, my oldest is 13, so we've been, you know, as he's been growing up, we've been playing a lot of games, uh, old games and new games. But uh, I remember when they re-released uh, Red, Blue, and Yellow for the 3DS, I bought a copy of Red for him on his little 2DS wedge that he had, and I bought a copy of Blue on my 3DS, and we played through the first-gen Pokemon together, which... I've played through that game several times too mm-hmm. because that's the my favorite, you know, one of my favorite games on Game Boy growing up. So I played it a bunch. <laughs> I used to play through like uh, my buddies and I would try to play through the first uh, gym and see who could do it the fastest with like nice different Pokemon or whatever. And we would just blaze through the first part of the game over and over again. Um, yeah, very seldomly do I replay a game. It has to be something that's pretty special. Uh, for me to go back and do it. I just don't have time. If I had more time, I probably would yeah. revisit more games. Yeah, I have this bad habit of 
of ignoring st- like I've bought games and not touched them like I still haven't touched Ogre Battle on the Switch ah. and I still oh, haven't man, touched I have so many well and it, part of it's just that like I didn't have to go back and play Breath of the Wild nobody asked me to I was just like I want to play Breath of the Wild one day and then I just got hooked all over again you know so that's that's a me problem because I will I will go back and revisit a game that I thought was fun just because I feel like playing it in lieu of doing my quote unquote homework of playing the game I'm supposed to be playing. That's the new thing is you know yeah. nobody's nobody's asking you to play new games either. Really? Yeah, well that's true, but I feel more of an obligation. You feel to play like the you have game. to justify the purchase. But that and there's level, a social like, there's a social thing where people are playing yeah. it and talking about it, and you want to be part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, Metroid Prime, I got to do that, have that experience with, but, um, you know, for like the new Splatoon expansion dropped and everyone was talking about it and I was over here playing Breath of the Wild. Like I haven't touched Splatoon since before the expansion. Um, so it's just, I get into these phases and sometimes it's an old game and sometimes it's something that I played a thousand times just cause I need that comfort food. So, um. So yeah, why don't we yep. jump into some of these community quest comments, question comments that aren't questions but comments on our question? Um, that's what we're going to call them now, by the way. So take notes. And we'll go around the horn and read them, read them off. I'll do the first one because it's short. We got Presto, who talks about Sonic Colors. He said played the OG on Wii, and it was my first Sonic game, and he had some great memories. Cool. Uh, um, you gonna read oh, the next one? It, yeah, I, I didn't know who was next. You go next. That's fine. All right, I'll, I'll go. I'll go next. Bozo says F Zero GX comes to mind when he first played it in eighth grade. Couldn't understand how anyone could even reach the credits. Now, after a hundred percenting the game multiple times, beating all the staff ghosts, GX provides a catharsis and a sense of mastery that other racing games simply can't compete with. Everything else feels so pedestrian in comparison. It is gaming in its purest, most intense form, and I love it. How so much? I, I mean, a lot of what I was saying about difficulty, and sometimes it's too hard for a while until later. How know? much would I have to pay Bozo to coach me in F Zero GX? Because <laughs> that, that game feels so out of touch for me. I haven't played it. Not out of it, touch. So I out of, out of I really enjoyed F Zero X actually, which yeah. the first X F Zero didn't click with me the same way. Um, but I, I really appreciate what it was doing. So yeah, I'd if, probably love GX. That you would probably love GX, and I mean, just pray that Nintendo does a remaster like they did with Metroid Prime because that would be crazy on the Switch. So would you rather? New game or a remaster of GX? Oh, game. I mean, I'd new rather game. have a new I game, know, I, I, but the old game still exists. I could, I could shell out the money to get it on GameCube. It's not cheap, but it's not crazy expensive. I think that a remaster on Switch is actually kind of likely. I think a new game is not going to happen until the remaster happens and sells like crazy. Then they'll consider it. But the remaster, I feel like, is at this point. Not a guarantee, but like very close to being something very, very possible that they would do. Okay, with since GameCube's getting so much love with the remaster um, thing right now, uh, my brother has something to say too. John, you want to read that one? Yep. So Adam says, replying or replaying games multiple times is a luxury that I haven't really had in a long time. The first exception to this is probably going to be Breath of the Wild, which I recently started a quick playthrough in anticipation of uh, Tears Tears for Fears coming out in May meets Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, it'd be awesome if we could get another Tears for Fears album, right? Uh, yeah. Conversely, uh, having just started playing Metroid Prime Remastered, I'm aff- amazed at how much I actually remember considering I haven't played it in 20 years. Yes, he and I have been talking about um, Breath of the Wild quite a bit in Pre- and Metroid Prime. And Tears for Fears. And Tears for Fears, yeah, always Tears for Fears. 
Um, and to wrap it up, we've got Solo Something who says Elden Ring. He's currently playing a second time, and we'll say that the opinion did change on this one. The first playthrough, he got so frustrated that he literally deleted the game off his PS5 because he was drained by the boss fights. Now, on his second playthrough, it's his junk food, and he loves to jump in and raise hell and see what trophies he can get. So that's another example of something, Sam, you were saying where... Um, just like the skill level, the skill ceiling came down for you in some way. Um, so yeah, that is our show topic for this week, guys. <clears throat> Thanks for submitting all your answers. Uh, we're also going to jump into our community couch real quick before we wrap up the show. Two dollar yep, hero asks a what? related question. So yeah, he asks, it's kind of the antithesis of your question. It's, are there any games you actually never want to replay? I call these big fish games. I want them to stay rose-tinted in my memory. I want to always remember the fish that I caught being massive, and I don't want to revisit it and see that it actually wasn't. A good example of this for him is Journey. I'll never play it again. I had my experience. Please give one example of this. Um, If I can think of one. I know one right now. I played the game Rhyme on the Switch uh, when it released. Uh, actually, no, I, I played it after a little while, after they patched it the first time. Because of whatever originally released, you couldn't play it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, and that game is amazing. Like, if you can get past, like, a little bit of hitches that it has, the story that it tells and just, like, how it feels... Uh, but it's one of those games where if you played through again, like it wouldn't have the same impact. So mm-hmm. there's no point in going going back to it. Yeah, um, mine is kind of a cultural thing where like it was. This game had such a moment in our lives, and if you try to go back to it now, it's just not. It just doesn't do it anymore. And it could also have been just where I was in my life. But um, Guitar Hero, <laughs> I I was working, I was an employee at Game Crazy when Guitar Hero launched for the PS2. Guitar Hero 1 and Guitar Hero 2, I was, I was on staff when both of those happened. And we got no work done. We had that in the demo station constantly and we were always playing it. And you know, we'd like, we like go head to head with... with um, customers and um people were obsessed with that game and that's like all we wanted to do at parties and at friends houses was guitar hero um and then it got so so big and then like the floor dropped out and and then it was it just disappeared and um the only way that i interact with it now is in the arcade which is like it's fine and you got some classic songs on there and it's like nice to remember but like i'm not nearly as good at it now as i was back when it was the thing to do in 2005 6 7 8 something like that um so that's just a game that i think kind of had its moment and i love going back and thinking about like man how much fun it was to just rip through those songs and like learn stuff on expert difficulty and impress your friends and just like pretend to be really good at guitar and like you're just pressing buttons um and then like nailing combos and two player and uh, like that's just some raw fun that I remember back then that just will never be the same now. Um, it's just like they're trying to bring it back. I'm sure they are, but I, I'm just never, I'm not interested now. Like I was interested when it, when it had its time, I'm never going to be that good at it again. So it just needs to live in the past. I'm, I'm happy where it is. Um, some great memories with guitar hero. Like, I don't even want to own it. It's not in my collection. I'm just like, nah, like it, I'm happy where it is. It's, it's rare for me too, because there's some really bad games that I will go back and buy just to have a copy of, <laughs> you know, but Guitar Hero, I'm just done. I don't, I have no desire for it, but I'm happy that it lives in my past. Yep. Same. I, I don't really have any. Yeah, you know, I I think it was if a game hard. is good, it's worth replaying. It was hard for so, me. I mean, to, there are to games go. I don't want to replay, mm-hmm. 
but that's usually because I've tried to and gotten to a point where I'm like, oh, I remember this part and it's not good and there are other things I'd rather be doing. Um, the one that came to mind for me in that respect was Twilight Princess. Uh, it's just, a, it's a game I've tried to replay like two times and just kind of gave up. And did you like it back? One of those times was before I left the first town. Cause I'm like, I don't want to get this fish for the cat. I don't want to farm goats. Like that game takes like three hours to get started. Did you like it? Yeah. Just- did Still you like it? Up- Did you like it when you first I liked played it? The it? First time. Yeah. I liked it the first time, but I mean, overall, I'd, I'd say the main reason I don't want to replay it is because it's my least favorite Zelda game. All right. You're entitled to your opinion. It hurts to hear, but you're entitled to it. I love Twilight Princess. Did you play the HD? No. On Wii U? Okay. He doesn't do remakes. I know, I know, but they fixed no, they fixed really. a lot in the HD remake, so I just want to throw that out there. If you ever want to feel like you do it again, they, um, did they get rid of the cat? Like they made a lot of the early game go for quicker. Oh. I don't remember exactly what they did, but they did fix some of it. The pacing is fixed. Um, that is going to wrap up our show for this week, guys. Um, we're going to skip Danverse again because my voice is hurting. And if I try to do too many voices, I fear that I will not be able to talk for the next week. Um, yeah. Um, gosh, we should really figure something out for episode 100. I'm serious. You know, well, we can talk about it. We will have time. Let's talk about it right now. Just kidding. Uh, but I do want to thank everyone for listening to the Retrologic Podcast. We are proudly part of the Nintendo Dads family of podcasts. If you like what you hear, you can check me out on Twitter at Retrologic Games. You're also welcome to jump into our friendly and 100% non-toxic Discord community. The link to that is in my Twitter bio. All of the things are at Retrologic.Games, which is our website. Um, John, you're on Twitter a little bit. What's the What's your handle on twitter for on topic uh it's just at on topic retro yeah and sam you're on twitter as something at mole third at mole third so also at third mole but that one's just where i dump screenshots from my switch so don't follow that one unless you just want my random switch screen switch screenshots yeah i didn't know you had that so now i'm gonna go follow it go follow all of our things um more than anything, though, if you're really interested, the Discord is the happiest place on earth, to steal a phrase. It's it's genuinely just so fun to watch all the cool conversations happening with people, um, you know, and everybody, like, if, here, here, I don't even, I'll just say this. If there was going to be an issue with somebody being a jerk in the Discord, we would handle it. We have seven or eight mods for like a hundred people, which is like a ridiculous amount, but we don't, we've never had to do that because people are just like, Oh, this is a place where you're friendly. So we're going to be friendly and encourage you. And if I don't like a game that you like, I'm just not going to talk about it. That's literally like the golden rule there. So if you are tired of like a weird toxic, like gaming Twitter or gaming Reddit where everybody's just pooping on each other. Um, come join our discord because we don't do that. You know, we, we joke around for sure. Especially if we like know we each just, other really well, we just share dinosaurs, but like we literally have an entire channel where we just share info and photos and memes about dinosaurs. We have a whole channel dedicated to plock. So if that's your jam, yeah. <laughs> You can see all of my silly original memes that I just have so much fun making. Like, yep. Ike if, saying you'll get no symmetry from me, and he's all distorted. Yeah. Every every October we celebrate Plocktober, where we we just it's just a celebration of memes. And uh, if you're down to clown, then welcome to town. That's what I'll say. That's I I said too much. I said too much. But uh, we love that you're listening and thanks for listening and we will catch y'all on the flippy flop. So bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.
Anybody have to go P? Nope. Nope. Okay. You sure? Because this is the only time during the week that you can go P when I ask you. I know. All right. You're okay. once a week. Right, well, you're once a week bathroom break. That's all. This I is why we all wear diapers. I've got a catheter, actually. So, much more efficient. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what is happening to this show so uh, this one's uh, it's off, evolving very off topic today evolving or devolving yeah devolving yeah, yeah. we're like the the goombas in the mario movie yeah uh, we're we just we're just like a middle stage pokemon evolution you know we're we're getting weird and ugly and we stopped being cute in the between we're gonna turn into a monster that will yeah destroy everything we should be called off topic retro we're not we're not a uh we haven't reached our potential yet oh you sound like my parents (laughs) very similar 